Welcome to the Neighborhood Church. My name is Pastor Yasmin. I am so glad that you have joined us for kickoff weekend at the Neighborhood Church. Even if you're tuning in from home, that is totally okay. We got lots of fun stuff happening at the church today, but what it means is all of our events and all of our groups are about to kick off. So you can actually take a look at that online on our website, but we have this thing called a connect card. And if you take some time to let us know where you're tuning in from, maybe this is your first time here, or maybe you have some questions about the groups that we have or ways to participate and ways to um, encourage one another, just fill out that connect card and we will get back to you with that. I am going to take us to our memory verse for the month and we're gonna read this together. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Romans 12, 14. Wandering through the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag I try with all my might can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting Vagabond Just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone He picked me up He turned me No choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. that you picked us up and turned us around. We're so thankful, God.
Jesus, you reign above it all. darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever unto your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life God, you poured out your life just to give us new life. From the lips of the forgiven, hear an anthem arise. Because Jesus,
Well, good morning, everyone. So glad you are with us for kickoff weekend. Uh, we are just looking forward to an absolutely amazing and uh, fruitful uh, year of ministry ahead of us. Encourage you to stick around for a hot dog or two or three after the service. I uh, love to just have you uh, get uh, a nice free, um, free meal on us before you go top quality hot dogs too. So uh, let's dig right into uh, God's word today. What you believe about God is the single most important thing in your life. What you believe about God is the single most important thing in your life. If you believe that God doesn't exist, you're going to live a godless life. If you believe that God is basically a mean sovereign in the sky who wants to beat you up every time you make a poor decision, you're going to live your life in fear. If you believe God loves you deeply and cares for you intensely, you are going to live a life of peace and fulfillment. What you believe about God is the single most important thing in your life. And so right on the beginning pages of scripture, we see a revelation of what God thinks of us. And if you were here last week, uh, a little bit of review. Genesis chapter one, 27 and 28. Genesis chapter one, uh, verses 27 and 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So God made you. <laughs> God made you. God designed people. And then what's his first action after he makes us? God blesses us. Could have done a lot of things, but he makes us, and what's the very first thing he does? God blesses Adam, and God blesses Eve. God's not against you. God's for you. God wants a wonderful blessing to rest upon your life. We go to Genesis chapter nine and verse number one. So Adam and Eve are the first major characters in the Bible, the second major character is Noah, and what does it say about Noah? God blessed Noah. So, so some of you are thinking, yeah, God blessed Adam and Eve because there was no sin yet. Nobody had fallen. Nobody had done anything they weren't supposed to do. And then God got mad and became the angry sovereign who is just always hoping that uh, we'll get our act together. But this is after the fall. And God blessed Noah. God blessed Noah, second major character in the story of history. 
Next major character in the story of history is a guy named Isaac, Genesis 25 and verse number 11. And after the death of Abraham, God blessed. Are you getting the story here? Are you getting the picture? Are you getting it? Maybe I should tell it all over again. Uh, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you deeply. And we need to believe it. So my, my first point today in going back to Genesis 12, 1 to 3 is where I get it is you must believe that God really wants to bless you. You must believe that God really wants to bless you. Next slide. Joyce Meyer said, being negative only makes a journey more difficult. You may be given a cactus, but you don't have to sit on it. And some of you make the mistake of saying, oh, my life is so terrible. I'm going through such a terrible time. And I, I, just, I just don't know if I'm going to make it through. I think I'm going to quit. I think I'm going to give up. And you sit on the cactus. Don't sit on the cactus. Don't sit on the cactus, please. Sit on the reality that God loves you deeply and God wants to bless you. Don't look at your circumstances and your situations and make your decisions based on circumstances and situations. Look up, look up, look up, and you will see a God who wants to bless you. Sitting on cactuses hurts. It wouldn't be so bad if it just hurt you. You become a pain in the butt to everyone else too. Don't sit on cactuses. Understand that God wants to bless you. And it's not just an Old Testament truth. Ephesians chapter one and verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ. If you are in Christ today, friends, what are you? You are? A blessing. Well, that too. You are blessed. <laughs> you are blessed. You are blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You're blessed. Blessed in Christ. I think it was four weeks ago, we talked about the fact that we are tripartite beings. And we are a body, soul, and spirit. Just wanna do a little reminding here, friends. You were created in God, where we started, Genesis 1, chapter tw verses 26 and 27. God made us in the image of God. And God, above all else, in the scriptural revelation of God, is he is spirit. God is spirit. And you are intended, above all else, to be a spirit person, a person of the spirit, a spiritual being. Now he gives you a body uh, to carry the spirit around in, but you are, above all else, a spiritual being. And then he, you've got this soul that is your control center, your thoughts and memories, feelings, emotions, mind, imaginations, and heart that really make the decision of whether you're going to be pursuing uh, personal satisfaction or you're gonna be pursuing God's glorification in your life. Your soul makes those decisions. You need to remember that God wants to bless you and he wants to particularly bless you in spiritual things because when you are alive spiritually and you're seeking first the kingdom of God, all the other stuff falls into place. You seek first spiritual things. 
Uh, and Romans chapter 12, so the reason I've got that slide up, just go back, just for a second, Jay. Uh, the reason I got that slide up is for you to see that your soul is where your thoughts and your mind are. Um, you've got to really build your mind up so you will be a person uh, who is thinking properly about God. What you think about God manage, matters more than anything else in your life. So you've got to be thinking straight. So now, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And uh, this is out of the easy to read version. I had never heard of the easy to read version until uh, about two years ago at our 9.45 a.m. prayer meeting. One of our regular attenders is always reading from the easy to read version. If you wanna be blessed by the easy to read version, come to prayer at 9.45. Um, I beg you, brothers and sisters, because of the great mercy God has shown us, offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him an offering that is only for God and pleasing to him. Considering what he has done, it is only right that you should worship him in this way. Don't change yourselves to be like people of the world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you'll be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. So where does the changing take place? It takes place when you let God do something inside of you that results in a new way of thinking. You've got to do some work in your soul that will get you pointed to things that are spiritual. God wants to bless you in every single area of your life. God wants to bless you uh, totally and completely in spiritual things. But you have to get into the word for that to happen. You've got to get into the word for that to happen. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 in the Amplified Version. And uh, I won't read all of it. We'll start with the word and do at the end of the third line there. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. How do you mature spiritually? by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing of your mind takes place by getting into the scripture. The renewing of your mind takes place by getting into the scripture. Uh, an observation from Jesus' ministry. So we get, we, we meet God in, in Genesis 1. We meet him coming to the earth in flesh through his son in the Gospels. And what's the first thing Jesus do, does in the Gospels? First thing he says, Matthew chapter 5, we know them as the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And there's this series of blessings that Jesus speaks into our lives. But have you noticed the blessings? They don't seem to have very much to do with uh, financial prosperity. They don't seem to have very much to do with financial prosperity. Well, that's not good. I want lots of financial prosperity. You're still living in the flesh and pursuing the flesh above all things. Where you want to be strong and where you want to be healthy is in the realm of the spirit. And all the other stuff comes into your life. God looks after everything else. So God's desire for you is spiritual things. So let me just highlight some of this. Matthew chapter five, uh, some observations from the Beatitudes. Uh, blessed are those who are in poor spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, verse number two, they shall be, verse number four, they shall be comforted. Verse number six, they shall be satisfied. Verse number seven, they shall receive mercy. Verse number eight, they shall see God. Verse number nine, they shall be called the sons of God. Verse number 10, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, verse number 12, great is your reward in heaven. God's blessing outlives this life down here. It's an eternal thing because it's rooted in what really matters. It's rooted in eternal spiritual things. It's the blessing of God. It's the blessing of God. So 
just some quick kind of bunny trail observations from the Beatitudes there. So I get up and go for a walk this morning and I sit down and do a little bit of reading. And the only thing I read on my walk is my Bible. And I'm in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6. And Paul is writing here, and I'm reading out of the contemporary English version. And he says, there are people who disagree with me, but they don't really know a thing. Their minds are sick. That's pretty clear. If you want to ha live a healthy life, you have to be thinking clearly. These people have sick minds. And they like to argue a lot. And then he goes on and they say, he says, these people think religion is supposed to make you rich. And religion does make your life rich. And religion does make your life rich. First Timothy 6 and verse number 6, by making you content with what you have. <laughs> the richest people in the world are the ones who have found absolute satisfaction in him. Because they understand, they can trust God with every aspect and every area of their life. God's desire is to bless you. And you need to believe that with all of your heart. Uh, and it only comes from having a deep relationship with God. You see, you can't, God's word, you can't say, oh, I think Pastor John's a really nice guy. Actually, I will let you say that. Um, <laughs> but you, you can't say, I think Pastor John's a really nice guy. But I don't, I don't believe anything he says. I never agree with him. The guy, he's so confused. Because my words are a reflection of who I am. And if you're rejecting my words, you can say all you want about how much you love me, but uh, you're really not embracing me. And you can't say, oh, I love God, I love, but I, I really couldn't care less what his word says. The, the standards there, I just don't agree with them. I don't agree with all that stuff he's asking me to do. If you love God, his word matters to you. And what his word calls us to do matters to us. Can't be any false separation or dichotomy there. Anyhow, keep moving. Uh, second thing we see uh, here is God blesses us so we will be a blessing. God blesses us so we will be a blessing. That's three or four slides down, Jay, you'll find it. Point number two. God blesses us so we will be a blessing. Genesis 12, verse two. I'll make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Why does God bless you? God blesses you so you will be a blessing. One hand to receive, one hand to give. One hand to receive, one hand to give. God blesses you to be a blessing. God blesses us to be a blessing. Now blessings flow in three directions. From God to man, from man to God, and from man to man. Blessings flow in three directions. From God to man, man to God, and from man to man. Blessings are meant to flow in three directions. Job, quite the guy. <laughs> there are times in this story where it really looks like Job is sitting on a cactus. But we read that God blesses him. 
And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning days. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys, seven sons, three daughters. <laughs> now, I read that, and the question that came to my mind is, how did Job know he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys? How did he know that? I, I get it that he probably got the fact he had seven sons, three daughters, I think. His wife would make sure he remembered that, but how, how, did, he, how did he know the rest of this? And I came to the conclusion that he must have counted them. How else do you know you've got 6,000 camels? 5,001, 5,002, 5,003, 5,004, 5,056, 5,099, 999, 6. I've got six because he counted them. Psalm 103 and verse number two. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Blessings, God to man. God blessed Job, but Job in return recognized the blessing of God. And sometimes I think we have so many blessings and we never return to bless God and thank God and worship God and appreciate God for the blessings we have. Blessings flow three ways, God to man, man to God, man to man. We need to be people who are not forgetting the blessings of God. We need to be people who are not spending our lives sitting on cactuses. But our hearts are directed to him in praise and worship and we're counting our blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. I think sometimes we've stopped counting our blessings. God blesses us to be a Blessing and part of it is blessing and thanksgiving flowing back to, to God. We are people who ought to, should be, <laughs> marked by blessing. Matthew 5, verse 44. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. What happens when you're going through a hard time and you feel like the whole world's out to eat you? You bless them, you pray for them, you love them. That's what God's kids do. You're working on the memory verse for this month, Romans 12, verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. We are people as children of God who are characterized by this, this attitude of blessing others. That's what we're marked by. 
were marked by that, were identified by being blessers. First Peter 3 and verse number 9. We don't repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, we bless. For this is something we've been called to, that we may obtain a blessing. You want to obtain a blessing? You want God's blessing in your life? God loves pouring blessing out on you. But you have to be a blesser yourself. One of the churches we pastored, uh, there was a guy who helped lead worship. And over a period of time, uh, he was sitting on a cactus and he became a pain in the butt to me. The only time church was good was the weekends he led worship. So he said, or thought. And he was coming with comments and suggestions. And why don't you deal with this? And why are you letting them sing that song? And on and on and on. And at that point uh, in my life, I let things bother me more than I do now. Uh, I've got bad news for you. Ah, I hardly let anything bother me. Um, don't take that as permission to see how far you can take me, but um, go, go back a slide, Jay. Don't want to be quite there yet. Uh, thank you. And, uh, but I knew the attitude I was getting in my heart and in my spirit was a stench in God's nostrils. It was ugly. There's a guy in that particular church who gave us half a cow every six months. Pretty nice. We didn't have a freezer. So we used the church freezer. And after church one Sunday, I saw that guy and my, my stomach's beginning to go. Oh, what you gonna say now? God said, Go to the freezer quick, get them two roasts and a few steaks. Grabbed them some roasts, gave them some steaks. Said, bless you, brother. And that whole spirit lifted from me. Never returned. We're not meant to be people who carry envy in our hearts. We are people who, who bless. We're people who bless. So point number three. When you give a blessing, blessing comes back to you. When you give a blessing, blessing comes back to you. Middle of Genesis 12, verse two in there. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. So what, what's the principle there? I will bless those who bless you. When people were blessing Abraham, they got blessed. But this is a principle here. God is no respecter of persons. When you bless others, guess what happens to you? When you bless others, guess what happens to you? You get blessed. When you bless others, you get blessed. God wants you to walk under this beautiful blessing. God's not against you, God's for you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. So it, it's, it, when you bless, it comes back to you. Blessed are the, as I'm quoting Jesus now, Matthew chapter five, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed, when you give mercy, what do you get? Mercy. When you bless, blessing comes back. My observation is I think in the last half of my ministry, people have been a lot more gracious to me. 
than they were in the first half. Maybe because you're supposed to respect old guys. Maybe that's part of it. Um, but but I think a lot of it is rooted in the reality that I was pretty hard on people the first 20 years. Let's get our act together, everybody. And then I realized I got a lot of my act I still need to get together. And the more I realized that, the more merciful I became. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. <laughs> you give blessing and then you receive blessing. So uh, John Stott died in 2011. When he was 88 years of age, he wrote this in his book, The Radical Disciple. I sometimes hear old people, including Christian people who should know better say, I don't want to be a burden to anyone else. I'm happy uh, to carry on living so long as I can look after myself, but as soon as I become a burden, I'd rather die. But this is wrong. We're all designed to be a burden to others. You are designed to be a burden to me, and I'm designed to be a burden to you. And the life of the family including the life of the local church family, should be one of mutual burdensomeness. Carry each other's burdens, and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. You see, life is not simple. And there are times when people around us have burdens and we don't run away from those people and say, uh, come back when you're healthy. No, we invest in them because there are also times when we need people to carry our burdens. We don't give up on each other and we don't give up on life because we're going through <laughs> burdens sometimes. When we see people with burdens, we are there too bless them and impart mercy. And as we impart mercy, we're planting seeds for when we need mercy, for mercy to come back to us. For mercy, when you, when you uh, give blessing, blessing comes back to you. Can I tell you about Johnny? Johnny worked at the grocery store. Johnny worked in the grocery store back in the days when there were baggers. Do you know what I mean when I say baggers? They were the people who, when the cashier had rung the price of the food in, took your food and put it in bags. Johnny was a bagger. Johnny also had Down syndrome. He loved his job gave everybody a big smile and happily put the food in people's bags. One night he went home and he got an idea. He said to himself, I think I'm gonna write out notes for everybody that says something nice and I'm gonna start putting it in their bags with their groceries. And so Johnny would go home from work and he'd sit at the kitchen table and he'd write the same note out over and over and over again. He called it a thought for the day. And when people got home with their groceries, they would look in there and there would be a thought for the day signed, Johnny. Did that for a few months and one day the manager's walking around the front end of the store and the cashiers and there's this huge long lineup at the register that Johnny was the bagger for. <laughs> so he goes around to the people, he says, what, I, gotta, I gotta go find some people to run these cashiers. Wait, they got a whole, what happened here? There's nobody going to, so he's looking, and he looks around, and there's actually cashiers at all the other registers, but vast majority of people are in Johnny's lineup. 
And he goes up to them and says, uh, you can go over there. We've got a cashier over there at number five and four and, and two. And, and they said, oh, no, I always go through Johnny's line. I always go through Johnny's line. One guy said to the manager, I used to come to your store once a week, but now Johnny puts a note in my groceries every time, so I stop at the grocery store every single time I'm driving by now to get Johnny's thought for the day. The manager called Johnny into his office and said, oh, people really like your thought for the day. You're blessing them. Why don't you write them out and then we'll help you make a bunch more copies and can I get all the other baggers to hang out, hand out your notes too? Johnny said, sure. <laughs> so the lines got distributed evenly. But the store, the atmosphere in the store began to change. <laughs> all of a sudden when uh, a flower came separate from the stem in the flower department. They weren't throwing it in the garbage. They were put, kept picking it up and finding a, a pin and walking up and down the aisles, finding a, a senior lady they could bless and put a flower on her lapel. The whole atmosphere of the store became one of, of blessing. Friends, I love this church. My wife and I love this church. My wife and I believe this church is a great, great, great future. But so much of it is rooted in us becoming blessers. When we take the ordinary events of life, <laughs> like putting groceries in bags, when we take the ordinary events of life and make them extraordinary by being blessers, you think parking's a problem now on Sunday morning. Just wait. Just wait. God <laughs> blesses us. We ought to respond back to him in blessing him. But we should also be people. <laughs> we should also be people who bless others. We should bless, if we're married, our spouse. We should bless our children, our grandkids. We should bless the people we worship with. We should uh, bless the people who work in the office beside us, down the hallway, the other end of the factory. We should be the people who walk the streets of our neighborhoods and people are so glad to see us coming because they know there's some words of encouragement and there's a smile coming down the street. Because when we're like that, we're reflecting our wonderful Lord, our wonderful Savior and our Creator who made us. <laughs> And then what's the first thing he does? He blesses us. He blesses us. Let's stand. In a moment you're gonna be seated, but I thought you could use a change of position. I want us to do something different this morning. I want 10 or 15 of you, if 16 of you come, I'm, I'm good at that. 17 will probably be okay too. 
But friends, we are blessed people. We are blessed people. And, and I would like 10, 15, 16, 17 of you to make your way down that aisle. And uh, you're going to come and you're going to stand right here and you might end up on TV. So if you don't want to be on TV, don't come. But I want you to just in one sentence express thanksgiving to God for something. You see, God's been very, very good to us. And sometimes we forget to count our blessings. Sometimes we forget to remember how much God has done for us. I want you to stir up our memories today by expressing something you're thankful for. Do you understand what I'm looking for? Okay, so a lot of you are gonna sit down but 17 or 16 or 15 of you are gonna go start making a line. So uh, be seated, except those of you who will come and edify us with a word of thanksgiving and blessing. Bless you. And uh, somebody lead the way here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, these are one sentence, one sentence. One sentence. So, I am grateful for, I am thankful for, one sentence. Okay, so go make a line. Everybody over there, good, beautiful. You got one sentence, John? Yes. Good, go for it. I thank God for the talent that he has given me through reading his word. Amen. I thank God for giving me every day of my life. He saved me in many, many times. Yeah, Lord, I just thank you for all the bumps and the valleys and the peaks, and you allowed me to, uh, to run and stumble, Lord. So I just thank you for uh, every terrible thing I went through that was my own fault. Anyways, Lord, I just thank you for the training that you put me through and, uh, and, and where I am today. I just thank you for everything that you've given me, even though I was at the bottom of the, the valley. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Rob. Bless you. That was one sentence, just lots of uh, commas. <laughs> lots of commas. <laughs> Bless you. I'm thankful for God because he gave me a $3 raise this year so I can give more back to the church. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm thankful for God for giving me my family, my education, and for bringing me here to this church. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm thankful for life and um, a beautiful family and beautiful people in my life. Amen. I'm thankful for my son turning nine on Friday. Wow. I'm thankful my son almost died and God saved his life. Beautiful. I'm thankful for my family. Awesome. I'm thankful for the Lord because I am a cancer survivor and then every time I have burdens in my life, He gives me strength and He is my comforter. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. You're all doing really good here. Bless you. Thank you. I am thankful that God has blessed my family and really put a positive spin on everyone's outlook in their lives. I appreciate that. Wonderful. I thank God for my salvation and my four healthy children. Wonderful. I thank God for leading me to my wife. And because of that, we have an amazing family and I'm also thankful for bedtime prayers every night. Amen. I am most grateful to God for finding me worthy and seeing me through my sobriety so I can watch my kids and now my grandkids grow. Beautiful, beautiful. I thank God for men who are brave enough to wear pants that look like that. <laughs> grateful for God for giving me um, a good wife. Yeah. Amen.
Did she buy you those pants? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful to God for his Holy Spirit to hear his voice and just stand firm in his promises. I'm thankful for God for never letting me go through my journey of grief. Um, let's stand and thank God for the fact that he has blessed us. I invite you to sing this through this morning and think of yourself and God's blessing in your life. I suspect we're gonna sing it more than once when we get to the second time. Maybe look around a little bit and as you sing, pray that God would bless the people in this auditorium today. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you.
so much for joining us today for our online service. Well, there are many ways to give. We just want to thank you so much for your giving to the ministry of the Neighborhood Church, where we can support not only our church community, but also missions local, provincially, nationally, and even around the world. So thank you so much for giving to our church. A uh, quick announcement, Youth Retreat is happening September 22nd to 24th at Living Waters Camp. The cost is $70 per student. I just encourage you to get online and register for that. If you have any questions, reach out to the office and Pastor Ethan specifically. And we'd love to have your student join us for our uh, youth retreat. It's always a good time. It's going to be good, hopefully good weather. If you perhaps aren't sending a student but could per potentially sponsor a student, we'd also encourage that as well because we're looking for sponsorships for maybe some students who can't afford to come. We'd like to see everyone get there. So youth retreat. September 22nd, 24th, be there. And so once again, thank you so much for joining us today for our online service. Our hope is that it's just been a meaningful time for you as we continue in our series talking about keys to being blessed. I'm gonna leave you with a blessing. Uh, you've heard it, Numbers chapter six, starting in verse 24. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Hope you have a great week at church. Let's go be the truth.